up, sisters and friends. Happy Monday, everybody. We are getting started on a great week here, and I am so, so thrilled to have the guest that I have on the podcast today. She has been a friend for over six years now. We've worked together for almost six years. Actually, we are coming up like on six years yes. this month, pretty much, because it wasn't it about April yes. or May that you moved. So that's actually really sweet and really awesome. And so she's my longest standing workmate. And I'm so excited to have Courtney Leatherwood on the podcast today. And y'all are just going to learn so much from her. I just have to say, and I just said this in our prayer, but truly, um, whenever I need someone to speak truth in my life or I need to confess something to a friend or talk to a friend about the hard things, Court is who I call. Like me and Christian always talk about how thankful we are that I have a court in my life. And so I'm thankful that you get to now be on the podcast and talk to all these girls and guys who are listening because you're just filled with wisdom. That's way too kind. No pressure, but thanks. Can you just hype (laughs) you up a little bit more before you start talking? (laughs) No, but seriously, and I told her, I said, this is the easiest podcast in my life to prep for because last night I was thinking, oh, you know, I probably need to think about this in the morning. I'll set some time to prep and then within like five minutes of sitting there while I'm watching Madam Secretary, my uh, Netflix Ooh, that's show. That's good. It's so good. Have you watched I that? forgot about that one. Yes. It is yes. a good show. Yeah, anyway, sidebar, as I was watching that, I sat down and I just like within five seconds had six questions that I was like, it was just so easy. And I think that it's easy to prep podcast for people who live their life just really loudly for Jesus, which is funny because you are more a quiet person. But the things that you, um, I guess the the goodness of who you are is so loud. And so it was easy to prep. So I'm excited. Um, I will start by this, which you will hate. But I want you to <laughs> tell everybody what you have done through like Ella, like what are the things that you've personally done and accomplished and that people would know? Because I know you're so humble and like you would be like, no, I hate this, but don't be humble right now because I want people to know what you've done because so many people do follow along Ella, see Ella's stuff, have bought words of affirmation, have come to conference, have seen all these things and they don't know that you're behind it. So tell us a little bit about that. Really, Sage? Yes, we're starting off there. Honestly, Gosh, I don't even know. I mean, it all started with Instagram graphics. Yes, it started there. Of like, how do we share truth on Instagram? And it in went an from- In an original way. In an original way, yes. Hand-drawn truth. Yes. Um, but gosh, what podcasts? I mean, you've done so much. Clothing. So, we've designed clothing together. We've done the podcast stuff together. All graphics or anything like visually that you've seen for LO, Court has- steered like you've you've come up with i mean as far as like if you've ever bought anything from words um court designed that for podcasts whether it's like the image that we use or all the social media graphics you definitely started that now you have people under you who help facilitate that but i mean the graphics and the visual you have been in total charge of conference when you come to conference and you see all of the visuals of conference that was your creative mind so I feel like it is pretty great. The website. You did the website. website. Yeah. It's kind of like anything you're like, hey, Court, can we do this? Sure. Sure. Let's do it. (laughs) Yeah, which is what I love about you. And I can't wait to talk about that later. But I wanted to say that to say that is not at all how you started at LO because we didn't even know we were going in that direction. We did not know a podcast was coming in the future. We didn't know a conference Mm -hmm. was coming. We we didn't know anything. When you Mm -hmm. started, we literally had an Instagram Mm-hmm. And we had, um, that was about it because we didn't even have our website done. It was an Instagram. It was an Instagram. And the whole way it started, I'll just kind of tell the story. So this is kind of sidebar funny. I was kind of dating Court's brother, which is how we met. And look, the Lord works all things out. And so I was at their house and I saw, I think it was like an invitation or something mm-hmm. that you were. I think it was like a friend's wedding it invitation. Was a friend's wedding invitation. And there were several of them out. And so it was homemade, but it was so beautiful. And I was like, this is really good. And you're like, oh, I do this. Yeah, it's like my side hobby. You know, I like to do cards and invitations. It's like, you're really good at that. So I just took note of it. And then next time we hung out, we were on a uh, a ski trip together Mm -hmm. and I was staying with the sister in the sister's room. We just got to talking and I just loved your heart and we really hit it off. And I just saw your 
doodles like you were just like doodling and I was like you're so good at doodling like I don't know why I was so infatuated by like your doodles and your drawings all these things I was like this is like very impressive it was a god-given gift that you had I mean I like to doodle but I'm like drawing a sunshine and a flower and it's not good honey honey thinks it's good but it's nothing to show it's the world good. it's nothing to show the world I've seen your doodles so I'm looking I'm like this is so good now in the meantime I was kind of in this La La Land in my head of, God, where are you taking me? Mm -hmm. What are you going to do through me? Want to do some type of ministry thing. Didn't know what that looked like. Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing these doodles and I'm like, does this have anything to do with each other? And like, again, like even saying that sounds so crazy. I don't even know why I thought that. Um, But within that trip, I asked you a question and I was like, what are you doing for your job? And at the time you were working a great marketing job yeah I was just kind of cruising I'm like I have this job I like to make cards I like to doodle do invites on the side that's like my outlet Mm -hmm. but like I can never have that as a job yeah and you were living I remember saying that I could never have that as a job never have that as a job and I was kind of like why yeah I could (laughs) never it's not a job like this is my this is like my side hobby yeah I have my job and I said, well, do you feel like you're doing what you feel purpose to do? And that one slapped you in the face. I didn't have an, I didn't have an answer. I was like, uh, and my parents are sitting right there. I was like, I don't know. I don't know. But the answer is no. I, yeah. I couldn't fully say I was like living that out. And I think even in my response of like, oh, I could never do that as a job. I was just so limited to like what God could do mm-hmm. versus what I should go do. Yeah, I remember that. And and even when I said that, though, I had no intention of like think I didn't know I was going to hire you. I didn't know that this had to do with me. I was just asking as a friend, like, hey, do you think you're doing what your purpose to do? I mean, yeah. you have a great job. You lived in Malibu. I mean, you're it was like very great situation. But there was something that I saw in you that was like, I have these deep passions for these other things. But it could never be my job. Mm-hmm. And I think I was more so pressing in on the idea of like, why do you believe it couldn't? You know, mm-hmm. because if God put it in you, maybe there's a way it could. Right. And I was just kind of dreaming with you. And then I go home and I tell my mom, I was like, do you think I could hire a court? <laughs> and my mom's like, for what? <laughs> what are you guys going to do? <laughs> I'm like, well, actually. And at the time, I was about to move to Nashville. Mm-hmm. And... um. I was like, you know, I think that what I want to do is this ministry thing. And, you know, I was seeing like ministries post like quotes. Like if a pastor preaches yeah. a message, they post quotes. And I was like, well, maybe we can post like quotes for my book and stuff like that. And then it'll be like inspiring on Instagram. And I was doing videos on YouTube. So I was like, maybe we can just take this and run with it. And I said, she's a really good doodler. And maybe she can make like all original hand-drawn quotes for me and so I called you and essentially hired you offered, you, offered a you a job to like, you're crazy doodle on Instagram for <laughs> me and um the job was also going to require you to move from Malibu mm-hmm. to Nashville mm-hmm. and so I have so many questions within this realm of it but just from your perspective kind of tell the story from your side of when you got that call and what some of your first thoughts were whenever I asked you to come you know, leave your marketing official job in Malibu to move to Nashville for um, a job that was so unknown. (laughs) I mean, I definitely was, I was not expecting that. I was caught off guard. I was always, you know, ready and expecting, okay, my friend's calling. Did not think that that would happen. And I think if I'm being honest, the first thing that rises was just the insecurities again of, wait, why is like, why is she asking me? Like she could ask anyone to go do this. Oh, there's so many other good people at this. Oh my gosh, I can't do this. I mean, it's so wild how quickly Mm -hmm. like your insecurities can just Mm -hmm. light a fire within you in a sense. Um, but I remember saying, okay, like I'm going to, I'm going to pray about it. And genuinely that was such a sweet time in my life of feeling like I had this big decision, but not feeling the weight because I really mm. felt God's presence. Wow. And I feel like I took a couple weeks. Did. Like I didn't call you the next day. Yeah, within like, those weeks, me and your brother broke up. That's true. For a couple <laughs> um, twists and turns. There were some moments of pause. Okay, God, what are you doing here? But ultimately that 
question and then my yes like really grew my faith, Sadie. And we mm -hmm. talked about that. But I remember worshiping one night at church and just like desperately praying. Like I, I yeah. think I just wanted him to give me such a clear answer. And the reality is he doesn't always do that. Yeah. He just doesn't. Yeah. But this time I felt the clear by saying yes to her. You're saying yes to me. Wow. And it just took the weight off that it it wasn't even that I'm accepting this job to work with my friend. It was like, no, I'm going to say yes because I believe God has given me mm -hmm. this opportunity. It's good. Through you. And it really stretched my faith. It's good. And everyone thought I was crazy. <laughs> it was. <laughs> So if you're watching this and not just listening, you might can tell that my hair is a little slipped back today, not the not the cutest, a little messy. And so that's why I'm so excited to work on a hair routine. Everyone's beauty routine is unique and Kitsch gets that. They believe that no matter what your hair type, skin type, or budget is, you deserve to be pampered at a price that you can afford. Kitsch has some awesome products that are great for your hair and your skin, like satin pillowcases, which I am most excited about because I love a good satin pillowcase. Kitsch has all kinds of awesome products that are great for your hair and skin, like satin pillowcases, which I'm most excited about, caps and eye mask. Hair care doesn't have to stop in the shower, y'all. Their satin products take care of your skin and hair while you sleep, and they're also vegan and cruelty-free. I ordered the satin pillowcase in the charcoal color for our king-size bed, and I'm so excited about it. I've heard great things about this. Um, especially when it comes to your skin and so so pumped about it they also have so many different sizes for whatever bed that you have and also so many different colors um, satin pillowcases help with just even your hair not getting too frizzy or tangled at night it also helps with your skin not breaking out as bad and um, definitely have seen people who have seen big differences and I've even experienced that when I've slept with satin pillowcases so I'm so excited to get my kitsch one in kitsch started in 2010 selling hair ties door to door with a dream and a lot of hustle and now the kitsch brand is carried in over 20,000 retail locations so it's pretty amazing and I love a great small business story a kitsch bestseller are the heatless satin curling rollers so say bye bye to heat damage these are the original the OG and still the best heatless curlers so don't settle for the knockoffs get the one that started the craze right now kitsch is offering you 30% off your entire order at mykitsch.com slash whoa that's right you did not hear me wrong that's 30% off anything and everything at mykitch, spelled M-Y-K-I-T-S-C-H dot com slash woe. One more time for you. That's mykitch.com slash woe for 30% off your order. So I hope I said this to you, and I'm not sure if I did at the time, and I know I've said this to you and stuff since. It, I was saying to y'all, like, your yes like, has to be bigger than me. Like it can't just be for me because if it was for me, like it's not going to work out. You know, like if you were saying yes to LO for any reason, and at the time there was no really reason for LO, but even if it was just mm -hmm. like, oh, well, you were just on Dance with the Stars or you just had this, like it wouldn't have worked. Like no. your yes had to be for the Lord and it had to be what he was doing in your life, not what he was just doing in my life. And I think that was so cool about what God did by you saying yes and by Steph and the other people on our team. It's like, it's it's not about like what God's doing in me. It's about what God's doing in all of us. And then all of us collectively going together on this one mission. I mean, it makes this beautiful thing because there's so many different giftings and so many different minds and so many different talents and passions and um, even faith, you know, levels at times. And so like, it's just been really cool. And I love that you said that, like by saying yes to her, you're saying yes to me. And the bigger yes was really to him. And I was going to ask you that, like, what, you know, what were you looking for and what you got? Because I think a lot of people are looking for like clarity from the Lord mm -hmm. and God doesn't always give you clarity like he gives you faith or trust and I think that you know you had that but what did that practically look like when you heard him say that was it in a church service was it just like this kind of underlying feeling and I know it's hard to explain it's hard to explain when the voice of God speaks but I want to ask you that because there are a lot of people in your position who are searching for an answer mm -hmm. and I just want to give them a you know proper expectation of what that might be yeah, no, that's a good question. I mean, 
that's one of like two times in my life I've had that moment. So think about how many years have passed since then. And I might not have had that clear of a moment, but it was in the middle of like a church worship time. So I remember being there. And at the time I was just really into journaling, like during church. So like worship and then sit down and journal. And like, that is what flowed out of that. And I didn't write a lot, but I wrote that. Mm -hmm. And I felt like that's what God was like leading me to just like put on paper of like pen in this moment. Um, And I I just kind of took that as my answer. It's like, okay. And I I think with that too, I felt such a relief um, and not a burden. Sometimes decisions, like big decisions, moves or new jobs or starting school or where to go to school. Should I go to grad school? All these things like they can be burdensome. It's true. And the reality is, is you might not get this clear answer all the time, but if you really trust that like you are doing your best to walk in God's will for your life, he will redirect you mm-hmm. where that has to be. And I think when you're sitting in that, you're not feeling the burden. Yes. You're feeling good. free that's to good. to keep moving in that direction and trust that, okay, hey, he might redirect me and that's mm-hmm. okay. But um Yeah, I I just remember feeling like very light and free. And I think the other thing with that on just a practical, like worldly sense, I might have said this in like an old podcast, but, you know, sometimes when God's leading you somewhere, it's like the opposite of what makes sense in the world. (laughs) That's so true. And I feel like I remember that of that season too, of like, not that it didn't make sense, but it wasn't an easy it thing. It wasn't an easy thing. It, it wasn't clear. It was compared to what you had. Yeah. It definitely didn't make sense. It didn't make sense. Because you had a very like established, like good paying job, um, with a good direction. I mean, you could have kept doing that and you're really good at that, you it know? Could have. Yeah. And you also grew up on the water. So we talked about like like little things that it's like, oh, I wanted to live by the water. I want like there were some things that you had to be like, okay, this doesn't make sense. This might be a little bit of a surrender to what my mm-hmm. personal preference is, but it's worth it because yeah. of what this is for. Yeah, and I think that right there shows your confident trust in God mm-hmm. and what He's going to do like with and for your life. And I think just for any of those people who are just trying to make those decisions, if God's leading you somewhere and it's okay for people to question it or, you know, hey, what's going on here? But if you feel really confident that that's what Mm -hmm. God's doing, like be confident in that direction because people are going to wonder and sometimes he's up to something else. That's good. Okay. So I want to talk about just feeling qualified to do something because (laughs) you mentioned like (laughs) immediately the insecure thoughts of, you know someone else could do this a lot better, all this stuff. And, you know, perhaps there are people in the world who are more talented than all of us in the things that we're doing. Yes. I mean, yes. the reality <laughs> is that is true. <laughs> like, Very if we're going to, like, look at it like that, it's like, actually, no, that's actually true. There yeah. are people around the world. Yeah. But but there's some reason that God's calling me to this. How did you get to the point of be- saying yes to even, like, your own ability? Like, there's it's, to me, sometimes I'm like, God, I trust you. You. I don't trust me. Like you're, you're an easy yes. Yeah. I'm the yes I'm worried about because I don't know if I can do it, you know. <laughs> yeah. And then it's that whole putting the piece together. Okay, it's gonna be you and me. Yes, but like, how did you? Did you feel qualified? Did you ever get to that point? Because I remember even when you started working for me and we worked together in our house, there were insecurities that totally. were rising. And like, how did you kind of work yourself past that? Because I don't see that in you at all anymore. Well, I will say that I think is the fruit of this, like getting to work together for so long and also just focus on the mission and not in the little details. Mm -hmm. Like I do feel that freedom now where I'm not as like nervous to show you designs or be like, is she going to like this? But I was really nervous in the beginning. And you're even like the most positive, like cheerleader type of friend and teammate. And even then I would be like... I don't know if she's going to like this. Um, and I think it, honestly, it just, it just took practice. Yeah. And um, yeah, it just took time. And I think that's okay. I yeah. think when you're learning new things, you know, especially I was this trying to learn how to be a graphic designer without having any training on how to be mm-hmm. a graphic designer, you figure it out. Yeah. And like you learn how to do things quicker or differently. And so Honestly, I think it just took time yeah. to find confidence in it. But it's it's okay if you're not confident in the beginning. Yes, I think that's so true. Because for you, it it wasn't from – and I remember saying, like, Court, like, I've never 
not liked what you've done or I've never shamed you for it. And I remember it was just like a true like self doubt of mm-hmm. like, I just don't feel like it's good enough to show you. Or I just don't feel like, but then like this confidence grew over time of like, okay, like I actually do have a real gift in this. And like, mm-hmm. you know, and you, you started creating a lot more too. It was like all these different designs, like just start coming out of you, which I want to talk to you about just your creativity. But I was asking you to make original design, which is hard because it's a lot easier to, you know, copy someone else what they're doing or look at the trends and be like, oh, well, this is where everything is heading. Right. But I was like, hey, I don't want it to look like everybody else's because you'll notice on Instagram, it's like somebody does something and everybody has the same thing. And I was like, I don't want to look like everybody else's ministry. Like yeah. we need, like if our name is Live Original, it needs to be original, which is a hard thing to do. And so with all of your creativity, like how did you, I guess, grow in just your ability to create original content and for you speaking to creatives out there do you have any Mm -hmm. advice for like how to get in that space yeah that's good say oh i feel like and just real side note on this this was like when we started doing the original hand-drawn graphics for live original this was like before it was super easy with an apple pencil and everything like you were at, like we were actually like drawing or painting I or writing. When you got the the iPad and you're like, look at how easy this, this is. This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and now I use it every day. Yeah. But that it really took time. So it was like a lot more time consuming. And now I feel like there's just so many great resources and tools where yeah. you can really do that. Um, to have your original handwriting, your original touch. Yo, the Bible has changed my life. It's pretty clear. It's all I talk about. It's made me who I am. It's given me my hope. It has made me uh, feel peace in times of trouble. Just really been the thing I cling to. And that's why I'm so excited to tell you about one of our favorite partners, Crew. Crew is a ministry that shares Jesus all over the world with the help of their missionaries in almost every country. But lots of the people they minister to are missing something, a Bible in their own language. And Crew can help fill that gap. For only $25 a month, you can provide three people with Bibles each and every month. And as a thank you, they are making a commitment that Crew will provide meals to 15 hungry people as well with their humanitarian ministry. Um, There are so many people out there who have already signed up, and I just want to say a huge thank you so much for going ahead and doing that as you've been listening to this podcast. You've helped so many people, and your help is so, so appreciated. To show even more appreciation to you guys, whenever you commit to helping Crew every month, you're actually going to receive a copy of my devotional book, Live on Purpose. I love this book because it's such a great way to connect with God in a simple way every single day. So you get a devotional book and people around the world get Bibles. So I'd say that's a pretty much a win-win for everybody. Crew is doing great work, but friends, they still need a lot of help and that's where you guys come into play. So simply text WOA to 71326. That's W-H-O-A to 71326 to help today. Just imagine how much this gift could truly change someone's life and not just someone, but generations of lives. So text WOA to 71326 to help now or just go visit give.crucru.org slash woe. Message and data rates may apply. Available to U.S. addresses only. But you would like have creative days where you would just take time to like um, like yes. get away and like I just watch you like stretch your mind into mm. these places. And I think in trying to do something that's original or new, it is going to require a stretching of your mind and yeah. not it's almost like the transforming of your mind and not conforming to the pattern of the world. It's kind of like that verse coming to life. Actually, it, it really is because it's it requires you to like retreat. I mean, maybe even the same way that you might go prepare for a message. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you're like, I'm going to retreat from maybe these things I'm seeing or this worship song or anything. Like I'm going to retreat mm-hmm. and like really just step away. Yeah. And it's kind of similar to that of like, how do I step away from Pinterest and Instagram and honestly just devices. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> just truly like unplug. Um, I remember those days where I was like, okay, I really need to come up with XYZ mm-hmm. for this project. And um, those were days where I would genuinely just go on walks. Yeah. Like, I would just move my body. I would be outside in creation. And I just, I feel like a lot of ideas and clarity often flowed from that. Um, but yeah, I think it's important yeah. to like step away if you're really 
you're really just trying to do something different. And there's some grace to that because it doesn't always just download. Yeah. And it's not that you can't take inspiration from people. No. Inspiration is always going to be there. And then you make it your original touch. Yeah. I mean, for me, even preparing for messages, sometimes I'll be like, okay, I know I'm going to talk about, um, you know, let's just say I'm going to speak on first John four. Yeah. And then I might look up literally Priscilla Shire, first John four, Kristen Kane. First John 4, mm-hmm. uh, John Piper, First John 4, like all these different types of voices. And I'll watch things that they've said mm-hmm. to spark inspiration. And then I'll go read commentaries and I'll, and mm-hmm. it's like I have this collaboration of all of these great thoughts. Mm-hmm. And now I make them my own. Now I take it into my prayer time. And then I stop watching everybody else and I think, you know, yeah. and I let God speak to me on what He's teaching me through these other people. And then it becomes my own ideas, my own thought, this new message that's all pointing to the same Bible. So it's going to have the same stories. It's going to have some of the same messaging, but it's in my voice, you know, yeah. it's in what God's teaching me. And I think like with creative stuff with like graphics and stuff like that is the same thing. It's not that you're not going to take inspiration. Like even for instance, for my book that uh, Christian and I are putting out in October, this is a really good example. Mm -hmm. So I'm watching um, the U S open tennis, you know, finals and this guy was wearing this outfit and I just loved it. It was a maroon and pink and red Mm -hmm. combo and I hadn't seen anything like that and I sent it to court and I said I love this combo let's do something with it yeah well courts also designed my book covers and so it came to the time to actually design a new book cover and court's like oh this is great let's try to use that pink and maroon that we really like from the U.S. Open so it was inspired by this one tennis outfit but you made it into how to put love first cover and so i think that's a good example and plus you did hand-drawn stuff or you made it look like that and i think that the handwriting one of the things that why we do that is because then it's always going to be original because no one has your handwriting like no one has your fingerprint so there are some things that you get to do there are but i love that you brought up that example though because i think that's another part of it of things that are inspiring or whether it's a color palette or some typography or just even like this background imagery, you're like, that is just beautiful. That Mm -hmm. makes me feel X, Y, Z. I do collect things as I go. So on those days where I'm like, okay, I'm working on a project, I feel like I have this bank of either screenshots on my phone or things I've saved and set aside that I can go return to Mm -hmm. those inspiring things versus feeling like I need to scroll or search in that Mm -hmm. moment. And so that's like a perfect example of that. I'm like, cool. oh, let's let's use this for something. Let's tuck this away. Yeah, we tuck a lot of things away, I feel like. Do. And then we do go back and use it. Um, I want to ask you about, because we talked about this before starting this podcast, because we were like, one thing we don't want people to hear is, even in talking about, is this your is this what you feel purpose to do on stuff that mm-hmm. you can't do? Because I, I believe this is true. I believe you can do anything on purpose with a purpose. Like, I believe if you are like, you know, I have all the desires in the world to be the American Idol, but right now I'm a janitor, then that can be on purpose for a purpose and you can use that season of your life while still singing and working hard on your voice and going to voice lessons. So I want to speak to that a little bit because you had this dream in your heart and not even a dream because you didn't even know it could happen, but you had this passion for creativity you had this passion for um even doodling and art and all this stuff but you also had like a really practical job at the time Mm -hmm. speak to the person who is the creative who's like man i have all this creativity in me but like right now it's just not practical for me to have a creative job like i need this marketing job um how do you stay faithful in that season yeah i mean first of all that's okay that's actually so normal like Most people have these like passions and these giftings and these things that they want to steward and these dreams. And a lot of that starts as a hobby or it starts at these, you know, late nights where you're like winding down from your nine to five and you finish your commute and you're at home and you finally made dinner and you have this hour of free time and it might be in that hour. And so just speaking to those people, like that is totally okay. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I think I think it really comes down to stewardship of mm-hmm. your passions and your dreams because, you know, what we steward with a little, we can steward with a lot yeah. someday. And I think it's just like really enjoying like what we have in that season to steward. Mm-hmm. Like at that time that you met me, I was just so excited and honored. My friend wanted me to design her wedding invitation. Yeah. I'm like, 
this, this is so fun. This is life giving to me. I'm not a professional, but I love this. And I think even today, I still love doing those things for my friends because it's this sweet stewardship of, okay, I'm not a wedding designer at all, but I really enjoy doing this. I really enjoy working with my friends or blessing my friends with a baby shower design or this little sign or, hey, I'm going to create these cool t-shirts. Like, yeah. I think whatever you're able to steward with those dreams, That's great. like start small That's and great. It, it could be something big or it could not, but That's like- great. Let that be up to the Lord. Yes. Y'all, we just got back from a beach trip. And let me just tell you, we got burnt to a crisp. We did not wear our sunscreen and it showed and it hurt. So after that, I was like on the search for the best sunscreen. And I found this from Native. Y'all know I love the Native brand. Didn't know that they had sunscreen and they do. This flavor is the coconut pineapple and it smells so good. I like to use the 30 SPF, but that's because I still like to get a little tan. But they have all kinds of things and it smells so good. The Huff family is definitely not done being out in the sun it is just starting the summer so we'll definitely be using our native sunscreen when we're out there this stuff is awesome it's super lightweight super uh sheer it absorbs quickly and doesn't leave any grease or oily feeling behind which it's always nice. Plus it offers uh, SPF 30 protection from both UVA and UVB rays. You know Native is all about natural ingredients and Native sunscreen is no exception. It's made from plant-based oils that are vegan, cruelty-free, and actually seal in the moisture. What's not to love about sunscreen that keeps your skin looking and feeling its best, plus not to mention smelling the best too. All Native sunscreen is made with 20% active zinc oxide formula that's tested by dermatologists and safe for sensitive skin. And not only does Native care about protecting your skin, they care about protecting the environment too. Their sunscreen is free of chemical active ingredients like oxybenzone and avobenzone, which are actually banned in Hawaii because they harm coral reefs. And Native sunscreen comes in some seriously sweet scents. Like I mentioned, I had the coconut and pineapple scent. It smells so good. It's tropical, but not too overwhelming. It just smells really, really nice. Honestly, I could have used it as my perfume, which is always um, a win. Native sunscreen also comes and other scents like rosé and sweet peach and nectar for your face and body. They even have an unscented option and I'm all about options people. I will probably be buying them all. So give your skin the protection it deserves with Native's mineral sunscreens. Go to nativedo.com slash woe or use the promo code woe at checkout to get 20% off your first order. That's nativedeo.com slash woe or use the promo code woe at checkout. nativedeo.com slash woe or use the promo code WO. And I think you really know where your heart's at if you'll do it before you get paid a dollar for it, you know? Um, I mean, I talk about that with this podcast. Like, I wanted to interview people my whole life because I love talking to people. And we did this podcast for two years without getting paid a dollar because it probably went negative because I had to buy all the equipment and hire people to help me do it, you know? And, um, but I just loved it. Like I just, I love learning from people. I love talking to people. But then also I'm challenged by, okay, if no one's ever going to listen to this conversation and I'm sitting there talking to someone at Waffle House, like do I invest in them with the same amount of interest? You know, like asking the questions of even how I asked you that day without even really knowing why. Yeah. So how do you feel purpose to you? Like, I just love asking people these questions. And so it's like, will you do it when the camera's not on you? Will you do it when you have no platform? Will you do it when you're not getting paid for it? Will you do it? Because that's like the abundance of your heart. Like, because that's what God's really gifted you with. Because that's what makes you come alive. And it's like workful rest for you, you know? <laughs> it's You're it moving is. your hands, but it's so restful. Like, it you just is. love it. And so I think that's such a good way to put it. It's stewardship. And you were doing it um, behind the scenes before you ever were doing it on a big platform. And um, because you did it faithfully, then you were able to say yes, knowing, oh, I can do this, you know, like I can do this. Yeah. And you've done an incredible job. And you still, like you said, you still do your cards and you still do all these little things. And I think that that's when you also know, too, when it does become your job, but you still want to do it on the side because it's just like. It's just what's in you. It is. And I feel like that's still just as important to continue in that. Maybe you do get this amazing dream job of something that you're super passionate, really talented at. 
And it's okay to still do it in the small parts outside of your job. You know, it's okay to like exercise and practice those things. It's good. I love that. One thing I want to ask you about, and this is something that is hard to teach people. And I've realized this because now you and uh, Steph and I, you know, lead our team. And we have different people on our team who are under each of us that we get to help teach and Mm -hmm. we get to help grow and they're like miniature versions of us in some ways you know they're creative or they're they love social media they love um creating graphics for those are the people that are under you and right now you know you have one girl under you who you're kind of mentoring up in that and one thing that I have seen you teach all the girls on our team Mm -hmm. and Steph teaches this too is that y'all are not scared of the things that sound impossible Mm -hmm. or the things that sound too far out because my my dreams are big (laughs) not gonna lie when we have when we have dream (laughs) meetings or vision meetings normally my my thoughts start with okay this sounds kind of (laughs) crazy I'm not sure if this is possible but I'm just gonna throw it out there and I've never seen and I'm truly trying to think I don't think I've ever said a dream that you and Steph had looked at me and said not possible like y'all have never done that like I don't think I don't so. think you've ever done that you might have paused and been I mean, like, might have been okay. like that's crazy <laughs> and that's fine because some of them are but like yeah. and, and there are, there have been hesitations and reservations and y'all have always been quick to be like hey that just might not be a good idea which I appreciate that's why I love working with my best friends but y'all have not been like, it's a no. You've always been like, let's try it or let's mm-hmm. see. We can see how this is going to work. And we had a moment recently with our team where someone, we'd asked someone to do something and they said, you know, that's just not going to happen. And you <laughs> quickly <laughs> looked at her and said, well, surely we can figure out how to make that happen. And I s- stopped everybody in that moment. I said, I just want to Make sure everybody heard that because like that is such a good spirit to have on our team to say, well, surely there's a way. And um, I just I feel like that is something that is hard to to teach people. It's something that's not really natural for everyone. Um, But you and Steph lead in such a good example of, okay, let's try it. Where does that come from? How do you grow in that? Mm. Um, Because I think it's a hard thing to grow in. Ooh, that's a good question. I do remember that moment. I think part of it, my nature is I do like solving problems. So I'm like, okay, how can we figure this out? And I feel like you and Steph also are very skilled at solving problems. Between the three of us, we we can figure, we can figure this out. We can figure this out with many options. There's always an option. There's There's always always an an option. (laughs) Even if they all fail, (laughs) we're going to try it. Yeah. Um, So I think that's part of our nature as well that like, it's not intimidating for us to like solve these problems or step into these big dream ideas of like, how do we bring this dream or vision to life? Mm -hmm. Um, But I also think it, I think it just has to go back to like your spirit of, are are you just willing to try new things? Like, are you willing to fail at something? Yeah. And, you know, we're really blessed that we get to work like as teammates and good friends because there's such a safety and comfort in that. And when you're in relationship, you know, whether it's like someone you're dating or your spouse or your team or your best friends, I mean, those are your safe people. Mm -hmm. And so those are the people you're probably more willing to be like, all right, yeah, let's go for this. You know, if we fail, it's okay. But um, I've really been thinking on this lately of like, just am I having a spirit that am I willing? Yeah. And you can go as deep as you want with that in whatever season of life you're in. But I think that kind of even applies to like That's good like this. Are, are you willing to try? Are you willing to try? Are you willing to try? And are you willing to fail? And are, and that's and are okay you willing too. to fail? You'll get back up. And yeah. I mean, we've had we had one of our biggest epic fails was something we worked the hardest on, which was our box. Yes, the box. And I think this is a good thing to to note because this was a good idea that just Great. didn't work. It's so good. when the whole box thing was big, like, you know, people buy subscription boxes. I was like, you know, what would be so awesome is if we did a Bible study box because so many girls say that they want to start a Bible study and they're like, oh, I wish you could teach it. Yeah. And I'm like, well, it's a great idea, it, you know, and they're like, I don't feel qualified or I don't know how to teach or I don't know what to make. I don't know how to cook. I don't know how to host. All stuff. I was like, well, we are going to answer all these problems for you and we're going to create a box that has 
everything in it that you need to do a Bible study. We um, wrote the sermons for it. We had a whole magazine that like had the crafts. sermons. There was crafts in it, cooking? which we included the crafts that you could use, all of the stuff. There was cooking. There was recipes. There was videos that went along with all of it. I mean, we worked hard on this box. This box did not sell. No. Nope. And we lost money on it. We lost a, like a lot of money on it because it was just a lot of work and mm-hmm. materials that we bought. And people just didn't buy the box. And we're like, man, that was a great idea, but that just did not work, you know? And so I think we did it one other time. We tried, we tried it twice. Yep. And it didn't work again. And we were like, hey, we have to move on. And from that, though, it really led us to starting the app. Ella's sister app. It prepared, it prepared, it prepared the way for that. for that. And now I look at Ella's sister app and I'm like, you know what? This is really a, everything in a mm-hmm. sense of what we were trying to do with the box. Mm-hmm. Now it's just on an app, yeah. which is just a more, you know, I you mean, it's where people are people. at. It's where people are at, you know? And so I, I say that to say, you know, that saying it's like shoot for the moon, you might hit the stars, you know? I think that's happened a lot of times with us. If, if you're willing to shoot for the moon, then you might actually land on the star. And then like, look at what happened, you know, look at where we've gone. And it wasn't our original idea. I mean, Elon Musk is like, you know, this guy trying to do all these crazy things. I was reading um, his, an article about his life one day mm-hmm. and it said he has set out, you know, for us to all uh, people live on Mars one day or whatever. And it was talking about how he has not actually reached his goal of doing that yet. Mm-hmm. But in the meantime of trying to do that, he's created four billion dollar industries like i mean that's crazy that's crazy and so in trying to do one outlandish Mm -hmm. crazy thing that might work one day um in the meantime here's four other billion dollar industries that have helped like change a lot of what the world looks like today and so i think that that is kind of innocence too of like when you look at something that feels impossible or too hard are you willing to say well i'll try and then in trying that's gonna lead you to maybe where you where you land where you end up yeah or you'll just you really like embracing that learning process yeah. of just the doing yeah and i think even like we've talked a little bit about creativity but when you are truly just embracing whatever it is you're creating, maybe that's cooking for today, yeah. whatever recipe you're doing, you're just embracing it. It might not turn out how you want. That recipe does not actually always work like Joanna Gaines it does, does it. it. And so, but you enjoy the process. Yeah. And I think even on a bigger level of some of these things we've like dreamt or stepped into, like we enjoyed the process. Yeah. Like I don't so regret true. ever saying, you know what? Yeah, we shouldn't have done that. Like, no, no, we wouldn't have known, and yep. we did it. And like, look at what God did beyond that. We didn't even know what He would do. Yep, I'm pretty sure Lionel Richie said this on American Idol. It's where I heard <laughs> it. I'm sure he didn't come up with this, but he said, "When you win, you win. When you lose, you learn." Mm-hmm. And I was like, "That is so good," and that's so yeah. true. When you win, you win. When you lose, you learn. So there's really no fail. There's really no fail. failure in that, you know? And yes, if you look at it technically, okay, I failed, whatever. But I learned and I grew yeah. and I learned a lot. And together as a team, we learned a lot through that process. And so yeah. I love that. And then even just that willingness and that spirit to always try to problem solve, I think it's just such a great um, characteristic to have and an employee and a person and a friend just to encourage those who are listening. I'll tell one other story about just a team moment where one of our team members, um, and she, she'll she die that I'm telling the story, but uh, it's just funny. And it was that conference. And at conference the first year, we had promised everyone that we were going to have beignets. The beignets? A beignet, beignets from Louisiana for everyone at conference, which was kind of a big thing to offer. But we, we had said it. I said it from stage. I said, and in the morning, everybody get here early because we'll have beignets. <laughs> so I get off stage, I'm backstage, talking to everybody about how awesome tonight was. And one of our teammates comes up to me and she says, yeah, uh, by the way, we're not going to have beignets. That didn't work out. And like, sorry, you just said that from on stage because we're not going to have it. And I was like, oh, no, we're going to have beignets. Like, I mean, it was like not even phase. like, why? I don't, like, I don't even want to know why we're not going to have it, but we're going to have them. Find a way. Find a way. I literally call my grandma. I'm like, to mama, do you know how to make beignets? Like, can we make beignets for people tomorrow? She's like, Sadie, it's 11 o'clock at night. We can't make beignets. I'm like, we got to make, I, I got to learn how to make beignets. I'm like about to like start making beignets. I'm like, we're going to Walmart, you know, because we said we're going to have this all this stuff. And so we all talk about it and we're like, hey, what can we offer realistically? 
And it ended up being like, we ended up having donuts for everybody. And that's fine. It was great. But I think that that's a good note to say, like, if plan A doesn't work out, there always needs to be a plan B, you know, to follow it up with. And if if it's not going to be beignets, that's fine. But at least let's provide donuts because we want to keep integrity for what we, that we're going to offer something. Yeah. And I feel like for you, one thing that you've done really well, you've always been going to come up with plan B. And I feel like through this, like, through all the things that we've done and your willingness and your faith, we've been able to create mm-hmm. things that I never thought was even possible mm-hmm. for us to create. I Like I said at the beginning of this, I never knew we were going to have a conference. I never knew we'd have a podcast. I never knew the books would come that came. I never knew any of that, but I'm so thankful that mm-hmm. through all the seasons that God put us together to do it Same. together because I could not have done what we've been able to do without you and without our other teammates. But I'm just so thankful for you and your mm-hmm. faith to say yes six years ago and your faith to continue to say yes through all the seasons. Like I said, we've gotten married since then. A we've lot of life. had girls. We both have our May baby girls. That's a requirement for Team LO. You had to have a girl in May. <laughs> and um, it's just been fun, Court. It's been a, a heck of a time. And I'm just really thankful for you. Oh, well, right back at you, Sade. And truly, for those who might not get to work with their best friends, just link arms with your friends. Yep. Go create. Go do things. And just um find friends who are just ready to like say yes to the big things it's good it's the best people to be around (laughs) well y'all i know you learned so much from court as i continue to every time i get to talk to court and i just hope that this was like as as much spiritual as it is practical for you guys as you step into the work world as you step into the creativity and the passions and the dreams and the gifts that god's put on your life and just know that no matter where you are you can do what your purpose to do so whether you have the job title that does that for you or you're just stewarding well what God put inside of you, you can do it right where you're at. So we love you guys. We're for y'all and we're cheering you on like a sister and a friend.